5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. There's been a big push in the last couple of years to try to basically eradicate quite a few different types of infectious disease. So that was in most parts of the world, so in parts of Africa and parts of Asia and parts of South America, there's been a, still a pretty big problem with infectious disease, even though the developed world itself has removed many of these problems. So we've had big programs in the past to try to remove the actual infectious diseases, such as polio and measles and smallpox, to in many cases to quite big success. And there's two reasons why. If we inf if we have seen the individual kids, they'll have individual immunity, which means they won't get sick. They won't get sick, which is really good. And also, there's something called the herd immunity. The more people who are vaccinated against, remember how infectious diseases get spread. They usually get spread by individual contact, right? So if one person is sick, they might spread that disease to the next person. And that if there's lots of people who are sick in a small area, that means that we're going to have more infections spreading at a faster rate. Now, if we have lots of people who are immune, right? So if, let's say, for example, we have uh, all these green dots are all people who are immune. And then there's one person who is sick. And that person can't really spread it to anyone because they're all immune. But if, let's say, we have everyone who can potentially be sick, right? So all these red dots don't have to be sick, but they can potentially be sick. And we have only one person who's immune. Let's say if this person gets sick here, he can spread to that person, that person gets sick, then this person can spread to this person, this person, this person. And really quickly, you're going to have all of the period people are going to be sick. So herd immunity means that if the individual is immune, that's good for him because he won't get sick, but he also won't be spreading the disease to anyone else. So even if someone does get sick, that means they can't spread the disease and the problem will be handled quite fast. Right? That's the idea of herd immunity. So the reason why I've been able to lower the incidence of quite a few different types of diseases is because of both individual immunity and the fact is in the herd immunity, meaning that if we get lots of people immune, then they won't be able to spread disease to anyone else. And even if something does get sick, that means it's going to stay localized and won't cause a problem. So if, for example, in many cases, and actually in the developed world, so in Australia and America, some of the diseases that have been basically eradicated in the past have come back to a small degree, have been coming back. And the reason why is because some parents are not vaccinating their, their children. So they they think that vaccinations are somehow bad and, and they want to stay away from vaccinations, means which means they don't put vaccinations in their child when they're younger, which means they can get sick, so they might become sick. And because there's more and more people who are not being vaccinated, if they get sick, there's more and more people they can infect because they're not immune, which means we have a small occurrence of these diseases again. So make sure if you do have children, vaccinate your children. There's no reason why you shouldn't be vaccinating your children. You're putting your child at risk and you're putting other people at risk as well if you're not vaccinating your children against these really common and deadly diseases. Right. But yeah, we've, so what we'll talk about in this video, we won't talk about developed world. We'll talk about more about the sort of past and a bit about the developing world. The top point says students will process and analyze information from secondary sources to evaluate the effectiveness of vaccination programs in preventing the spread and the occurrence of once common diseases. So once common, which means now they're not common anymore, such as smallpox, diphtheria, and polio. So we have to evaluate how effective these programs were in trying to prevent these different types of diseases. I'll talk about smallpox first. I'm going to actually go pretty quickly to make sure that this video doesn't last for too long. Smallpox is caused by virus. And what you get is you get high fever and a rash. You can see this person here is infected by smallpox. You can see all the smallpoxes all over the place. Obviously, it's a really deadly disease. And it was once the deadliest infectious disease and it killed over 300 million people in the 20th, in the 20th century. So it's really, 20th century is not too long ago, about 100 years ago. So it was really a huge problem. Now, vaccines were first made available in the 1840s, but they weren't really, they weren't used. They weren't widely used. They're just, they were made available, but they weren't used, more or less. That's a, that was a problem. It's currently today, it's still a, a problem in about 30 countries. Sorry, it was still a problem in about 30 countries in the 1960s. So, especially the, the developing countries, 30 countries. But in 1978, or 1970s, in 1970s, the World Health Organization started this mass vaccination campaign. So these pictures here, 
this would be part of the mass vaccination campaign, where they went and just vaccinated every child they could find, more or less. And what that helped is it helped really reduce the, the occurrence. And now smallpox is actually more or less gone. So smallpox itself, which used to be the biggest killer in the world just 100 years ago, is now more or less gone. So how effective was that kind of campaign? It was very effective. We started to, to vaccinate the, you know, America and Australia in the 19, in the early 1900s, sort of 1920, 1930s. And we ma managed to get it controlled in the developing world in the 1970s. But yeah, it's really effective. So it's really gone, basically gone. Smallpox is more or less gone. Not fully, but more or less. Next disease is diphtheria. Now this is caused by bacteria. It's very contagious. And initially you get a fever. And the problem is it covers your respiratory tract. So basically your, you know, your trachea, so your lungs and your breathing tube. I, I want to say trachea, but I always get made fun of because my, when I say trachea, it sounds really stupid. I don't actually know how to say it properly. So I'm just going to say breathing tube, but, or windpipe. But what happens is you basically have this slime, which comes and makes, comes really solid. Because we can imagine your slime tube, your breathing tube here. And usually it's quite you know, liquidy and quite flexible. But this bacteria will make it really solid and leathery. So it'll make it really hard to actually maneuver. And what will actually happen is you will suffocate eventually because of this. So eventually your breathing tube will be so leathery and solid that you basically suffocate. Which is why 90% of the people who have diphtheria will actually die. So 90% of the infected die. Now, the vaccination was f for this um, bacterial infection was first introduced in the US and Australia in the 1930s. And actually, the incidences went down really quickly. So after the 1930s, whilst diphtheria used to be a pretty big problem, now it's actually, again, pretty much reduced to nothing. And the problem is always targets babies, which is why you have that picture here of babies. But now again, now it's, it's more or less gone. And after it's been removed in the developing and developed world, so Australia and US belong to the developed world, the same campaign which tried to remove smallpox also tried to remove diphtheria in the developed developing world. So it should be actually developing world. So parts of Africa and parts of Asia. And this was also done in the 1970s. And again, we've got, we've more or less have it under control now. So the, the, the occurrence of this disease has dramatically decreased due to this vaccination campaign, which happened in the 1970s. So both smallpox and diphtheria are more or less under control. Then we have the last one is polio. Polio is caused by a virus, the polio virus. And what it does, it affects the nervous system, which is to do with your muscle movement and everything else, and your brain. And it's first of all, it's deadly. In many cases, it will kill the actual victim. But if it doesn't kill, it cripples because it affects your nervous system, which is to do with your muscles. You can see this child here. She can't, obviously she's lost control of parts of her body. That's because a virus destroyed nervous cells or, or interfered with nervous cells. That means she can't do her normal movements because the nervous cells are to do with movement and everything else. So if it doesn't kill you, it cripples you. So obviously you can imagine polio isn't something that you want to have. And it was a quite common death in infants and in young children before the 1950s. Now, first, they actually developed a vaccine in the 1950s, which wasn't that safe. So people who took it actually got polio and then died. But a safe vaccine was developed in between the 1950s and 1960s. And that 1950s and 1960s vaccine basically made it in the developing world, uh, sorry, developed world, has more or less eradicated polio from the 1960s onwards. Now, I, always, I don't know why I always keep writing developed. This is the developing world. So at first it was eradicated in the developed world, in America and Australia, etc., and Europe. And then the developing world was targeted, again, by the World Health Organization and their mass, their mass vaccination campaigns. These ones earlier here. And this was done from 1974 onwards. So polio has been in the developing world, has been more or less you know, controlled. The, the incidences have been gone down dramatically so that their polio is still around but overall a lot less than we had beforehand and it's not really around in the developing in the developed world in Australia and USA and Europe it's not a problem anymore just a bit of a problem in some developing countries I'll quickly go over the dot point again so we need to talk about the evaluate the effectiveness of vaccination programs in preventing the spread of 
occurrence of once common diseases such as smallpox, diphtheria, and polio. Smallpox, which was caused by virus and caused high fever and death, used to be the deadliest disease to, known to mankind, more or less. But from the 1900s, 1960s plus onwards, we've basically managed to eradicate it. It's not causing much problem anymore. It's been removed from our disease pool. Now, the diphtheria was another one caused by bacteria. It was very contagious and basically it makes you suffocate, which is not a nice way to die. And 90% of people who were infected died. So that's a huge dying rate, death rate. Um, so we've got these vaccines, which were introduced in the 1930s in Australia and in the US and Europe, which more or less caught, just eliminated the problem in the developing world, eh, sorry, in the developed world. So that was first was gone in the developed world. And then the World Health Organization sort of turned to developing the developing world their mass vaccination campaign, and now it's more or less under control in the developing world as well. So we've more or less removed diphtheria through these vaccination campaigns. Now, polio, polio is caused by virus and causes deadly, it's either deadly or it causes crippling because it affects your nervous system. Now it was a huge problem before the 1950s, but we developed a safe vaccine for the developed world in the 1950s and 1960s, which means there's more or less no problem anymore in America, or Australia and Europe. And the same campaign that tried to eliminate all the other ones in the 1970s also tried to eliminate polio. And polio is still a problem in some countries, but most problems, most countries have no more problem with polio, including Australia, which is good because polio is really a harsh virus as well. So as to, as conclusion to this video, you can see that the vaccination campaigns have been quite successful. And one of the reasons why we stopped have stopped dying from many infectious diseases that were a huge problem 100 years ago and make sure to vaccinate your, your future children to make sure that they don't, they don't suffer from any of these diseases and they don't, that they can't infect anyone else as well. I hope that's useful. Thank you for watching.